for God is God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified. Welcome, people of God, again to this evening's segment as we continue our our topic. We have been looking at Second Chronicles twenty. I think by now <laughs> we must really be exhausted looking at Second Chronicles twenty. This is like the second month. I truly believe that. When we study the word of God, we really need to, to see the gems, the spiritual gems, the wisdom that is in each and every chapter of the Bible. Glory to God. Second Chronicles, it's, 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 it's every, you know, we, it, we, we face challenges, we face trials. It's what every Christian go through in life. You will go through trials. Unfortunately, we are living in a time that... Um, we are living in a time that many of us children, we have been taught about a God that some, somehow, a, a, a God that does not bring us to a place of, uh, of, of trials. We will always have trials when we are here on earth. There are always going to be challenges, but there is a way of overcoming those challenges. There is a way, you know, Jehoshaphat shows us how. The first thing that he did is when he heard he was under attack, you know, he was to seek God. He sought God. He declared a fast to hear God. I've talked about why he fasted, what fasting is. It was clarity to hear God to hear God, right? So today I want to talk about the importance of what do you do after you have heard a, a prophetic word? What to do after a prophetic word? Or after you have heard from God? It might not even be a prophetic word. It might be a word of knowledge. It might be advice. Somebody giving you an advice who is sent from God. It might be a dream. What do you do? Right? What do you do? Now, if you don't have a word, Seek the word. <laughs> Glory to God. You have to seek the word. If you don't have a word, seek the word. Because you see, it's very important to, to take note here that God, glory to God, God uses his word to deliver us. So if we don't have the word, we have to. You have to. Lord, what have you done? I've led many prayers. I've counseled a lot of people. One of the things that I do when somebody is going through a challenge, I always ask them, what is God saying? What is God saying? If they have a word from God, and I can tell that this is a word from God, it's easy to help them. But if they don't have a word from God, always bring them back to a place of, you need to seek God. Find out what is God saying. That's the most important thing. So what do you do after Right, let's assume everybody's got the word of God, right? Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 18, right? Maybe we start with verse 17. We talked about verse 17, I think, uh, uh, last week. Glory to God. Verse 17, what does verse 17 say? In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, right? What does verse 17 say? You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand, ye be still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. That's the word of God. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. So he gets a word. Jehoshaphat gets a word. So when he gets this word, this is this is this is phenomenal. So when he gets this word, glory to God. I'm trying to put um, our moderator here in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, people of God. Glory to Jesus, right? So when he gets this word from God, there is something that he does. It's a demonstration, right? What do you do when you get the word of God? So verse eighteen of Second Chronicles twenty, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground. Remember, this is a king. Now he gets a word that he doesn't need to fight this battle. Right? So what do you do? Number one, you submit to that word. You submit to what God has said. It's very, very important. Right? So to bow down, it's a symbol of submission. Right? I'm submitting to what God has said. 
what is he saying to us here when he bows down to God? What is he portraying? He's like, I'm not submitting to the enemies. I'm not submitting to the beggar that I'm facing. I'm submitting to God. I'm submitting to his word. Glory to God. So that is what to do. The number one thing to do is you submit to that way. Because without submitting to that way, guess what? You continue facing the same struggle, facing the same battle, right? Even though God had spoken to you, right? He submitted to the way. He bowed down. It's also humility in his part. The word that came to Jehoshaphat came through an unknown prophet. Jehaziel was not known. Right? But Jehoshaphat here, we see him bowing down. Right? So what to do here is this. Learn, glory to God, learn to, to submit to the word that has been given to you. God is a God that speaks all the time. God is very talkative. I'm telling you, he is so, so talkative. If you look around you, God is so talkative. If you put praise and worship, listen to the voice. God will be speaking to you. Open the Bible. God will talk to you. God talks all the time. I've faced many people saying they are struggling to hear God. I'm thinking, how can we struggle to hear God? Even creation, it speaks glory to God. It declares the glory of God. So to bow down here, I am submitting to God. I'm humbling myself to God. Now, the reason why Jehoshaphat has to bow down here, imagine if God speaks to you, you are standing up. There is no bowing down. Bowing down in the Old Testament was a symbol of uh, the, their total surrender to God. That I'm surrendering to this word. I'm allowing this word to work that deliverance that I need. So that is what we do. Whenever you hear a word, might come through an unfamiliar source. Submit to that word, right? Submit to that word. That is why it's important as a child of God, the things that we have talked about before this segment, glory to God, to grow in knowing how God speaks. If you don't grow there, I've met people that have been in bondage for a very long time in something that God has set them free four years ago. Right? Four years ago, 10 years ago, but because they did not submit to that word. So that word did not work for them. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Right? So he submitted to the word of God. So Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground. Now, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem, they fell down in worship before the Lord. So number one, we say it's submit and submission is humility. Right? It doesn't matter the channel that God is using to bring that word to you, you, we need to learn to submit to the word. When you submit to that word, the word will work for you. James 4, verse 7, it says, submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Right? That word, when you submit to it, it will be the catalyst that will resist the power of the enemy. It is what is going to caused the devil to flee. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, remember, what did he do? It is written. He submitted to the word of God. He used the word of God to fight. So what do you do after you get a word of God? Use that word of God. Right? Bow down before that word. Humble yourself before that word. The word of God will come to you. I'm stressing this point because it's the most important point. Glory to God that I have to make this wonderful evening. The word of God will come to you. But when it comes to you, it will not come through sometimes the people that we like. It might come through the people that we might not even consider that God can use. So it's a very important here to take note of this lesson from Jehoshaphat. He bowed down with his face to the crown. Imagine kneeling down to this prophet that you do not know, right? But he wasn't bowing down to the prophet. He was bowing down to the word. So that is the thing that we do. There are countless times here we start even lifting up men. That's why you find so many of those children struggling with what to do when they get the word of God. Ah, there is a big prophet over there. Listen, prophecy is from God. When you submit, it's not submitting. Now what's this? As in you are worshiping 
the person that has brought the, that, that way. No, you are acknowledging that God, you have brought deliverance through this great woman of God or through this great man of God. Glory to God. So that is what you do. So you have to, 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 to learn to submit to the word of God. Humble yourself before the word of God. And number two, worship God. So they bowed down and they fell down in worship before the Lord. Worship, again, is a token of surrender and reverence towards God. So when you hear that way, that is coming from God, glory to God, worship, worship. So number two is to, is to worship. So Jehoshaphat, he worshiped God. When he got that way, he worshiped. It's to worship. Now, worship is big in the Jewish culture. Now, in the Jewish culture, worship also uh, involved sacrificial giving, right? It also involves sacrifices, right? Sometimes when you get the word of God, you hear the word of God. That's why in most churches, right, what you get, you get the word of God. Then immediately after the ministry of the word, you get offerings. Some churches, I don't know how they do it. Maybe they operate by super faith. They do offerings before the word. But most churches, they give the word and then they give offerings. right? Because an offering is a token of your worship. Lord, I've received that word. You know, I've received what you have said to me. Now, since I've received this word, now this is my token of worship. I am worshiping you, appreciating what you are going to do through this way. Remember, what is going to bring transformation or change? Number one, he said, it's your humility towards the word, submission towards the word. Number two, it's your worship. Glory to God. As you worship God, because there is power when you worship him. So they bowed down to worship God. Whenever you are going through challenges, let's, let's take it again. Hear what God is saying. Now, take advantage of what God is saying. Submit to the word of God. Number two, worship God. Worship God. Because when I'm worshiping him, a, a, a surrender to God, a reverence towards God, I am saying, I'm not worshiping this challenge that I am facing. Right? I refuse to pay attention to it. Now, why is these two points so important? Now, many of God's children, they hear God's word, right? But they don't submit to it. Not to submit to the word of God. This is what they do. They continue talking about the problem even though they have heard the word of God. It's a sign that you have not submitted to God. Now, you are no longer resisting the devil here. Now, when you continue talking about the problem, what's this? Instead of resisting the devil, you are assisting the devil. Right? There's a great difference. Now, when you submit to God, the word that you have submitted to, what to do after you hear the prophetic word, when you submit to that word, that word is the power that will overcome the enemy. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It is what will overcome the devil. That's why it's very important. It's vital when you hear the word of God, you submit to it. Now, worship, we also said it's a surrender and a reverence towards God. So when you continue talking about your problem, have you? Maybe I've operated in the prophetic or in the word of knowledge, right? Sometimes I give somebody a word, right? As I give the word of God, next week, they continue talking about the same problem. Next of next week, they continue talking about the same problem. That's a telltale sign that there was no submission or worship to what God is saying. When there is a worship, no matter the challenge, take note, the enemies of Jehoshaphat were still there but his countenance had changed because he took advantage of that word. He took the word and he submitted to God. He took the word and he worshiped God. There is power when you receive the word of God and you worship him and you glorify his name. It means to the devil, whatever you have tried to do, is not going to move me. It's not going to shake me because, what's this? I have heard from my God. I have the word of God, a sure word of prophecy. This is scripture, right? I have a sure word of prophecy that is able to bring me to the place of light, right? I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a train. It's my victory. 
Glory to God. I'm sensing here, people of God, we have not been taught these principles, right? We have been taught here, even when you hear the word of God, as long as the enemies are still in your peripheral vision, you can still see them there. That you, you still have to, Lord, what am I going to do? No. The moment you hear by his stripes you are healed, and you know it's God who has spoken that, no matter how raging the symptoms are, you ought to enter a place of surrender, worship. You ought to enter a place of submission, humility towards God. The word of God that has been spoken over you, it is the grace that will lift you up. So what do you do? Submit and you worship God. Then number three, right? I've dwelt long enough here, so let's break camp. Let's move forward, right? Let's go to verse um, 20, verse 19, right? Verse 19, which is very important and is different from worship. Because many people think what we are about to talk about is the same as worship. It's different. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites, oh, these names, it's like you are speaking in deeper tongues, stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud song or a very loud voice, right? They started praising God. So number three, you praise God. If you can sing, you start singing. There is nothing that irritates the devil than somebody who sings in the midst of a back, right? You have heard the word of God. You start singing. In fact, praise, you can even praise him when you have not heard him. It will speed up your hearing of God. What do people do? What do people do? People complain. They cramp. Let me show you a scripture, right? We will come back here. Um, I want to read a scripture for us in Philippians 2, verse 12, I think, from verse 12, they are about. All right, 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 Listen to what he says. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Right? Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Now, what the enemy tries here, even when you have heard the word of God, when you have enemies around you, they surround you, he wants us to grumble and complain. Now, Paul says, do everything without grumbling and complaining. Do you know? that when you begin to praise God, instead of grumbling and complaining, you are stirring up the fire in the enemy's camp that will consume him. Whenever you are facing a battle, whether it's a sickness or a disease, I've shared this testimony before. One day I couldn't sleep because I had an ankle problem. I don't know what had happened to my ankle. And I was listening to, to, to a preaching on faith. The Holy Spirit says, stop it. Now what's this? I hear the word of God, right? Stop it. Put praise and worship. I put praise and worship. I couldn't sleep because of the pain. As I started praising God, you know, worshiping God in the midst of that, the pain left. The pain left. When you can praise God in the midst of challenges, a spouse has walked out on you and you are praising God. What do you, what do you think people are saying? They say you are crazy, right? But that is what you do as a believer after receiving a prophetic word. That's what you do. Glory to God. Now, if you don't have a word, you seek the word. Right? But when you get the word of God, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, you start praising God. Now, what people do here, instead of praise, they complain and grumble. Let me help you. <laughs> Let me help us today. Especially, it's, it's common with, with ladies, right? When they are going through challenges or when you are going through challenges, what do you do? You gather around people that are going through similar challenges. Start talking about how bad the situation is, all right? How bad the husband is, how bad the children are. Guess what? That is grumbling. That is complaining. You don't win in that battle, right? The key is this. You surround yourself with praise. Glory to God. You saturate yourself with praise. 
talking about how bad the situation is after you have received the word of God, it's not going to help. In the Old Testament, in the book of uh, Numbers, the children of Israel, there is a place where they grumbled against God and against Moses. Do you know what happened? The earth opened up and it swallowed them. So what to do when you get a prophetic word? Praise God. Don't grumble and complain. Just praise him. Father, I thank you that you are God. From beginning to the end, you are still God. In the morning, you are still God. Yes, Lord God, I might still be faced with this challenge. Lord God, yes, the doctor might have given me this report. Yes, Father, I might not see change in these symptoms, but I'm praising you. I'm glorifying your name because, Lord, you have said I don't have to fight this battle. Now you're praising God. You are lifting him up. right? You also even start singing. Thank you, Jesus. As you begin to sing and you glorify God, you see, it says when praises go up, what happens? The blessing comes down. So learn to praise God. So number three, praise God in the midst of the fire. You praise God. Think of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. <laughs> right. King Nebuchadnezzar, he erected a statue. And he said, if anybody bow, does not bow down to this statue, we will throw them in a fire, in a furnace. Right? They took Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. What did they say? We are not bowing down to this. We are not bowing. Even if we die, we are not bowing down to this. They put them in that fire. What happened in the fire? There was a fourth man in the fire. When you praise God in the midst of your fire, in the midst of your trial, the Holy Ghost turns up. The Holy Ghost turns up. Glory to God. So when you hear the word of God, praise him. Learn to be a praiser, not a complainer. Learn to be a praiser, not a complainer. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. You know, even when you are faced with challenges, uh, you have to have a certain mindset. As a believer, you need to know you are a warrior. You, 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 you are created in Christ Jesus. There is nothing, if you have this mindset, there is nothing that can put you down as a child of God. Then you, 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 you walk in the revelation of proper praise, of genuine praise. Glory to God. He says, okay, right, this sickness is bad. If I die, I'm in the presence of God. Do you know, the enemy won't come to you because the way you think, you think different. There are challenges that I go through in life. I always tell the devil, I say, devil, you know I've got a big mouth. I'm going to talk about this, right? See, you, you, you have to be uh, somebody who is strong in the Lord, right? In the Lord that you are able to praise him in the midst of a tribe. So that's what you do after you get the word of God. So Jehoshaphat raised up people to praise. No, man, I've come here long enough. Let's continue. Now, verse 20, which is very important as well. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. What's this? They are going to the back, towards the back, towards the back, right? Towards the back. They've heard the word of God. They are not sitting at home crying, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? They went towards that thing. Learn to go towards your enemy. Remember, the whole armor of God. There is nothing that covers our back because there are no quitters. There are no cowards in the kingdom of God. So when you hear the word of God, take that word and march forward. March forward. Go towards the desert, towards where the back is heated up because now you are equipped with the word of God. The story of young David with Goliath. Goliath was a giant taunting the armies of Israel. And David comes to the Berkeley front. He picks up five smooth stones and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is defying the armies of the Lord? Everything that is coming against you is defying God, it's not defying you. So God is a God that will speak to you. Any sickness is defying God. How can I be sick when the Bible says he took, he took my infirmities, he carried my sins, by his time I was healed. You, it, it's coming against Jesus. It's not coming against me. Any breakthrough that you face, remember, the breakthrough is not yours. Are you not a child of God? 
It doesn't matter what it is, right? So you have to think different, glory to God. Because when you think different, you march towards the backlist. You don't run away from backlist. As believers, we do not run away from backlist. We are more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. It doesn't matter what we face in life, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That is the mindset that we have to have as Christians. So that is Jehoshaphat. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, glory to God, he set out. You know, he marched towards the back. You go, you go towards the sickness. You go towards the disease. You go towards everything that is coming against you. You march towards it because you are using the word of God. Think of it. Jehoshaphat did not go towards the back without the way. David did not march towards Goliath without an understanding of the covenant. That's why it's very important, child of God, to be acquainted with a God that speaks. There are many of God's children. They camp in their troubles. They dwell there. So they don't understand people that think differently. You ought to think different. Glory to God. As a child of God, you ought to learn to shut yourself in, 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 a, in a room somewhere and start speaking in tongues when things are tough. You ought to learn even to delete people from your, from your phone that are not helping you. Glory to God. You ought to learn to fight. You are in a battle, and God wants you to win. It's time to win. <laughs> I feel I felt that in the mighty name of Jesus. It's time to win. Don't be crying around, oh, what am I going to do? You know, my marriage is coming unglued. What am I going to do? Things I'm facing this. And... No, 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 no. No, glory to God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the You march towards that. You march towards that glory to God. You speak life into that situation. That is how you march towards your begging. What to do after a prophetic word? Go after the enemy. St oh. <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, don't rehearse on the enemies. Because mm. when you rehearse about the magnitude or the bigness of your problem, you will not go towards your enemy. So that is what to do. Number one, submit to God. Number two, uh, worship. Number three, praise. Number four, march towards the Berkeley. March towards the Berkeley. So early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. Right. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Now, right? We said submit. We said worship. We said praise. We said march towards the bed. Number five, right? What is he doing? When he says have faith, when you receive that word of God, mix it with faith. Mix it with faith. You mix the word of God with faith. Do you know there are many of God's children hear the word of God, but they don't mix it with faith. Right? They don't mix it with faith. The children of Israel, let me read for us a, a, a text here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. This is very important. Glory to God. It is one of the greatest keys in Scripture. Ha, 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 ha. Right. For we also have heard the good news proclaimed to us. We heard the word, right? So you have heard the good news that you don't have to fight this battle, right? So we have also heard the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they had was of no value to them because they did not mix it with faith. He's talking about the 12 spies that were sent to spy on the land that belonged to them. When they went to spy on the land, they ran away. They said they were grasshoppers. They did not go after the giants like David, right? They were so afraid. They retreated. In Christianity, there is no retreat. There is no surrender. When we hear the word of God, we mix it with the faith. We advance. We are the army of the living God. We advance. When we retreat, what are we saying about our God? Right? What are we saying about our God? Let's go back and round up here. Yeah, we find out what Jehoshaphat says 
here in, 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 in verse 21, which is one of the greatest key in Second Chronicles 20. He begins to tell them how to obtain victory. And it's the most neglected thing that I've seen in contemporary Christianity. Verse 20, listen to me, Judah, and people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in what God has said. God has spoken to us. Let's mix this word with faith. And this word will upheld us, right? Will uphold us. You will be upheld when you have faith in God. So when God speaks, you have faith. What does he say? It doesn't matter what you are facing. That's why it's very important to look at the enemies of faith. We'll talk about this, but not today, right? When you hear the word of God, mix it with faith. Mix it with faith. So you shut yourself to other things that other things that are, are, are negative, things that do not build you up. Glory to God. So you want to, to grow. You surround yourself with people that speak faith. Right? Never surround yourself with people. Ah, this thing, I also went through it. You know, you always have those people, right? I also went through it. Eh, the thing was bad. It, it did not help me. Listen, you will not overcome. You want to surround yourself with the people that will say, mm -mm, I'm holding on to what God is saying. I'm mixing this word with faith. The 10 spies had a negative report. The Bible calls it an evil report. After they went to spy the land, when they came back, they persuaded the children of Israel not to enter the promised land. 40 years, they perished. God is a God of restoration. He wants to restore families. He's a God of healing. He wants to heal you. Have faith in him. Mix the word of God with faith. Again, when you mix the word of God with faith, when you go to the house of God, you hear the message. Take that message. Ask yourself, how do I apply this message in my life? Right? The message that has been preached, mix it with faith. So when you hear a prophetic word or you hear a message, mix it with faith. Even a dream that comes from God, Mix it with faith. To mix something with faith, it means you are doing it. You are doing what that word is saying. The final one here, listen to what he says. Have faith in the Lord your God and you'll be upheld. Have faith in his prophet and you'll be successful. That is Jehoshaphat. Have faith in his prophet, you'll be successful. Now, faith in God, you'll be upheld, which means you'll be established faith in his pro in his prophets it means every battle that you face god has sent prophets to speak on your behalf so that you'll be successful to obtain victory so the final one here you need to trust in the person that has been sent to you that is what faith is many of god's children they are all over the place they've got consultants when you are going through this challenge, you want to ask A's opinion, B's opinion, up to Z. Now, pray, ask God, Lord, who have you sent in my life? Jehoshaphat had Jehaziel. God sent Jehaziel to, to, to him. Glory to God. God is not an author of confusion. Even when you go to a church, learn to submit to the ministry in your church. Glory to God. Have faith. That is a prophetic voice for you, right? The ministry in that church, the minister in that church is the voice of God. If you study the book of um, Revelation, the letters to the angel of the church in Ephesus, to the angel of the church, right? The angel being the pastor of the church, the leader of the church. So you have to have a trust in relationship with your spiritual leaders. Because if you do not trust them, it is hard for you to work the word that comes from them. So you have to develop that attitude. We are living in a time where people are rebellious against spiritual leadership. There is no success there. Glory to God. That's why it's very vitally important as a child of God, even when you attend a church or you are in a church, to know that God has placed you there for a reason, for a purpose. So when that word comes, when you are hearing that word, take that word, use that word. There are so many of God's children. 
you hear a word even on Sunday before you even go to your house and allow that word inside of you to have faith, to mix that word with, with faith. You, are, you have already moved on. You are already listening to somebody else. Then there is no success. So have faith in his prophets and you'll be successful. That's the word of God. Trust the man of God or the woman of God that has been sent to you. He is the one that has been sent to deliver you. Yes, God might use other people in the local church, in the local assembly. God does that countless times. Sometimes, even in the local church, there might be a prophetic voice from another brother, another sister. It's very important to know how to steward that. Remember, Jehaziah was in the company of the people there from the house of God. It was not Jehoshaphat the king who had the solution. It was God using Jahaziah, a prophet. So God might bring a word in that local church. Trust other believers. Glory to God. Because you are the body of Christ. As the body of Christ, guess what? No weapon formed against the body of Christ shall prevail. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against what I'm building. So learn as a believer. Put your trust in the prophetic utterances that are in the house of God. Take hold of that. Take advantage of that in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. So these are the points that we have made today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. Take what you have heard today. Use it for the glory of God. Use it for the glory of God. So number one, submit yourself to the word that has been given. Number two, humble. You know, worship God. Surrender to God. Number three, praise God when you have the word of God. Number four, march forward. Use that word. Number five, have faith in God. Have faith in God. You shall be established. You shall be upheld. Number six, the final one, have faith in the prophecy or the prophetic word that has been given to you in your local church, in your local assembly, or the man or the woman of God that God has sent you to you. You know, have faith in that. God is a good God. He does not want people to struggle. He wants people to win in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, I thank you. I glorify your name. There is no one like you. I thank you, Father God, that you have taught us these principles. So I pray for your children that they will be established. I pray for your children that, Lord, they will experience success. That which they have heard tonight, I pray for the grace to put it to work in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Till we meet again next week on Thursday, have an awesome, blessed, blessed evening in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, people of God. Hallelujah.